Imagine a poison that slips into the body unnoticed, colorless, odorless, virtually tasteless, leaving doctors baffled by its strange symptoms. It sounds like the plot of a detective novel, yet it is all too real, and it has a name, thallium, often dubbed as the poisoner's poison. Thallium has gained infamy as a silent killer, much more feared than arsenic. But there is much more to this element than its deadly reputation. Today we will uncover the history of thallium's discovery, explore its unique properties, see how it's been used in the industry and science. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. So if you like these type of videos and want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode. Also, if you want to influence next week's experiment, make sure to fill in the poll in the community tab. Now we would like to thank each and every one of you as we have now reached 10,000 subscribers on this channel. And we are really happy that we managed to get so many followers in such a relatively short time. In our case, about 14 months. We are far from done and we still have to make a few celebration videos, so stay tuned. So the ampule in this cube is a lot smaller than from the other cubes and this is likely due to the fact that this element is extremely toxic. Now, thanks to my wife's camera wielding skills, we still get a pretty good picture. And as we zoom in, we see, yeah, of course, a silvery white metal. Okay, so that was not as spectacular as we may have expected, but it still looks very nice and seems to be a great addition to our periodic table that now starts to become quite a collection. However, it is hard to believe we've only covered about one third of the elements so far. Now, if you want a piece of thallium yourself or you'd like any of the other elements, click on the link in the description, use the promo code so you'll get a 10% discount and you will be also be helping out our channel. Our story begins in 1861 in an era where chemists were racing to discover new elements. William Crookes, an English chemist that looked like he is using his moustache as a weapon, was examining the residue from a sulfuric acid factory. He decided to try a brand new technique called flame spectroscopy, basically burning a sample and looking at the colors in its flame. If you want to know more about it, watch this video. Now to his surprise he saw a brilliant emerald green line shining in the spectrum. This was a color no one had ever seen before in any known element's flame. It was as if a tiny green twig had flashed before his eyes. Inspired by that vivid color, Crookes chose the name thallium, from the Greek thalos, meaning green shoot or green twig. A pretty poetic name for a metal, right? Now around the same time, a French chemist named Claude Auguste Lamy was also isolating this new element independently. Scientific discoveries can sometimes happen in parallel. By 1862, both Crookes and Lamy had managed to extract pure thallium metal. Crookes even showed off a pile of thallium powder at the World Fair in London. So what is thallium like beyond its colorful introduction? Well, in its pure form, thallium is a soft, heavy metal that you could cut with a knife. Freshly cut, it has a silvery white shine, somewhat like thin or lead. But blink and you will miss the shine. As soon as thallium meets air, it starts to tarnish. A clean thallium surface quickly dulls to a bluish gray as it forms an oxide layer. Now, as you can see inside of this cube, ample, you can see that it still maintains the silvery white shine. Now that is because the ampule is filled with a noble gas, I think in this case argon. Now in other words, this metal doesn't keep its good looks for long. Thallium is also quite heavy, about 12 times denser than water. In the same heavyweight league as lead, it melts at around 304 degrees Celsius or 579 degrees Fahrenheit, which is relatively low for a metal. That's hot, but a kitchen oven could reach it. Not that anyone should ever try melting this toxic metal on a stove. Now, chemically, thallium is full of surprises. On the periodic table, it's element number 81, sitting in the boron aluminum group. But it behaves a bit like a double agent. It can exist in a plus three oxidation state, like its lighter cousins, aluminum or gallium, but it prefers a plus one state, more like the alkali metals. Think like sodium and potassium. 
Now, this matters because the thallium plus one ion is a master impersonator of potassium, a vital element in our bodies. Our cells, machinery, especially our nerves and muscles, rely on potassium ions. Thallium sneaks in, masquerading as potassium, and that's where the trouble begins. Biologically, thallium is extremely toxic, a true wolf in sheep's clothing at a cellular level. It interferes with numerous processes, essentially throwing in a wrench at the body's biochemistry. So what happens if thallium gets into a person? Well, the effects are horrific. One notorious symptom is hair falling out in clumps. Survivors of thallium poisoning often describe waking up, uh, finding their hair on their pillow. In fact, sudden hair loss is a classic clue for doctors to suspect thallium. Thallium also ravages through the nervous system, causing numbness, tingling, and pain in the hands and feet as nerves degenerate. Victims might start with flu-like complaints, fatigue, headaches, stomach pains, which then progress to tremors, convulsions, and even paralysis. Now, because these symptoms can mimic other illnesses, thallium was historically hard to diagnose. It earned a dark reputation as the perfect poison, easy to slip into food or drink, being colorless and tasteless, and hard to detect until too late. Even a tiny dose, this metal packs a punch. A total of just one or two grams of ingested thallium can be fatal to an adult. Now, unlike quick-acting cyanide, thallium works slowly and insidiously, giving a poisoner plenty of time to cover their tracks. Now, before we move on, it is worth noting that while natural thallium isn't radioactive, it's a stable element, it is still hazardous waste. It can absorb through the skin, and inhaling its dust or fumes is equally dangerous. Industrial safety standards today are strict. Workers must avoid more than minute exposures. Ventilation and gloves are a must when handling thallium. Now, similar to arsenic, it's ironic that an element infamous for poisoning also found its place in practical applications. Thallium may be deadly, but in controlled settings it has been useful. Let's start with the early uses of thallium, which in hindsight read like red flags. In the late 19th century and the early 20th century, thallium compounds were tried as medicine. Does that sound familiar? Thallium sulfate was once given in tiny doses to treat ringworm infections of the scalp and other skin issues. The logic was that thallium's toxic effect would kill the fungus. It did, but it also made the patient's hair fall out, essentially acting as an extreme depilatory. Now, thallium was even tested against diseases like syphilis, gonorrhea and tuberculosis and to curb the night sweats of TB patients. However, the cure nearly killed the patients because the line between therapeutic dose and a poisonous dose are razor thin in this case. So not really unsurprisingly, doctors abandoned thallium treatments once safer drugs like antibiotics came along. A good thing too, the phrase kill or cure was a bit too literal with thallium. Now, while medical use faded, thallium found a more nefarious commercial role as a rodent killer, pretty similar to arsenic. Thallium sulfate became a popular ingredient in rat poisons and insecticides in the early to mid 20th century. It was incredibly effective. Sprinkle a bit in the pantry and goodbye rats and bugs. Household could buy thallium-based rat poison over the counter in many countries. Now, one famous product in the 1940s and 50s was called Thal Rat, in Australia openly sold to deal with infestations. However, leaving such a potent toxin freely available was asking for trouble. Accidental and deliberate thallium poisoning began to mount, and by the 1960s and 70s, authorities wised up. The United States banned thallium in household pesticides in 1972, and many other nations did the same. So beyond killing pests and unfortunately occasionally also some people, what legitimate use does thallium have? Well, despite its bad reputation, industry and science have made some use of this element's unique properties. Thallium's ability to conduct electricity and respond to infrared light made it useful in electronics. Now, for instance, thallium sulfide is a semiconductor material that changes its electrical resistance when exposed to infrared radiation. Now, this property led to its use in photoresistors and motion detectors in the past. Thallium selenide was similarly used in infrared detection equipment like bolometers, devices that measure heat radiation. 
These uses have become less common with newer technologies, but they were important in the mid 20th century. Now, thallium's contribution to optics is quite interesting. Certain thallium salts, like thallium bromide iodide crystals, have a, the remarkable ability to transmit infrared light. Under the trade name KRS5, these crystals were used to make specialized infrared lenses and windows for devices like night vision equipment and thermal cameras. Moreover, adding thallium oxide to glass can dramatically increase the glass's refractive index. Imagine high-density glass that bends light more strongly, useful for making advanced camera lenses or optical instruments. Some special high-index lenses and low melting point glass formulations in the 20th century included a dash of thallium. Of course, given the toxicity handling and disposing of such thallium containing glasses had to be done with care. If you have ever had a stress test for your heart, you might have encountered thallium in a life-saving role. A radioactive form of the element thallium-201 is used in nuclear medicine. Doctors injecting a tiny, carefully calibrated amount of thallium-201 chloride into a patient because it behaves like potassium. It flows to the heart muscle. Now, special scanners then track the radioactivity to create an image of blood flow in the heart, revealing blockages or damage in the cardiac tissue. It's called the thallium stress test, and it has helped diagnose heart diseases for decades. It's quite a twist that an element known for causing harm can also be used to detect and prevent harm in patients. All about that dose and context. Speaking of twists, thallium even found its way into low temperature thermometers and switches. By alloying mercury with a small percentage of thallium, about 8.5%, engineers discovered the mercury would remain liquid at a much lower temperature than normal, roughly about 20 degrees Celsius colder. This mercury thallium alloy doesn't freeze until about minus 60 degrees Celsius, which proved useful for measuring extremely cold temperatures. Imagine Antarctic weather stations or scientific freezers. So if you needed a thermometer to stay fluid well below mercury's usual freezing point, a pinch of thallium would do the trick. Clever if a bit hazardous. There are also cutting-edge research areas involving thallium. In the late 1980s, scientists discovered some high-temperature superconductors containing thallium, complex oxides of thallium, copper, barium, and calcium, etc. These materials can conduct electricity with zero resistance at temperatures warmer than liquid nitrogen. An exciting breakthrough. Now, thallium-based superconductors have set records for superconducting temperatures in the lab above 100 degrees Kelvin, which is extremely high in the superconducting world. Researchers have explored these for potential use in MRI machines, energy storage, and maglev transportation systems. It's mostly laboratory research, but it shows that thallium still has some surprises up its sleeve in advanced science. And believe it or not, thallium can even put on a show. It's used in fireworks and signal flares to produce a beautiful green flame. Remember that green spectral line that led to thallium's discovery? Well, that same signature can tint a flame emerald green if a thallium compound is present. Now, because of toxicity, it's not a common ingredient in consumer fireworks, but in professional displays or special pyrotechnics, a tiny bit of thallium can create a eerie green hue in the sky. A dazzling sight, just don't stay downwind. So let's get back to the poisoning. Thallium has been used or suspected in numerous other poisonings around the world. In the 1950s, Australia saw a spike of thallium murders, so much so that newspapers dubbed a thallium craze. At least half a dozen women in Sydney were accused of using readily available thallium rat poison to dispatch inconvenient husbands or relatives during the, that era. One old lady, Caroline Grills, was convicted of poisoning four family members with thallium-laced tea and earned the grim nickname Aunt Thully in prison. Now, even intelligence agencies and dictators have dabbled in thallium's dark art. It's been reported that Saddam Hussein favored thallium to eliminate political enemies in the 1980s because it killed slowly and left victims dying days or weeks later, often far from the scene of the crime, making it harder to trace. 
Now, in a bizarre twist of espionage misdirection from former Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko, fell fatally ill in 2006. Doctors first thought Thalia might be the culprit. His hair had fallen out. The world later learned that it was radioactive polonium-210, but the fact that thallium was the initial suspect speak to its infamous status. Now, it's clear that thallium's toxic legacy has left a mark on forensic science and law enforcement. The good news is that nowadays thallium poisoning is rare and much more likely to be recognized quickly. The distinctive symptoms, especially hair loss, are taught in toxicology courses, and modern labs can test for thallium in the blood or hair samples with advanced instruments. Now, there's even an effective treatment, Prusium Blue, a medication that acts as a sort of a chemical sponge to bind thallium ions in the intestines and whisk them away. The sooner it's given, the better the outcome. So while thallium remains a fearsome poison, it is not as easy for modern day poisoners to get away with it as it once was. So let's end this episode with some fun facts about thallium. Now, legendary mystery writer Agatha Christie featured Thallium as the murder weapon in her 1961 novel The Pale Horse. In the story, victims show mysterious illness and hair loss clues that the brilliant detective eventually ties to Thallium. Christie's work was so accurate that it ended up saving lives. In at least two real instances, doctors or nurses recognized the symptoms in a sick patient because they'd read The Pale Horse leading them to diagnose thallium poisoning in time to administer the antidote. Thallium can make really heavy liquids. Uh, there is a mixture called clerici solution, a blend of thallium formate and thallium malonate, that is one of the densest water-based solutions ever made. It is so dense that geologists used it in the past to separate minerals by density. Some rocks would literally float in it. Clarice solution can have a density over 4.2 grams per milliliter, more than four times heavier than water. It's a cool party trick for science nerds, except for the minor detail that the solution is highly toxic and corrosive. Understandably, this method isn't commonly used anymore. Now, because thallium isn't radioactive in its common form and not metallic magnetic, it can be hard to detect if somebody tries to transport or smuggle it. However, its use is so restricted now that any significant purchase or shipment of thallium compounds tend to raise red flags with authorities. In many countries, only certified laboratories or companies can obtain it. So unlike the mid 20th century, you can't just walk into a shop and buy thallium. Thankfully. Well, I still have it in a cube and I think by now I understand why I get such a small piece of it. It's a metal that can diagnose heart disease and enable high-tech gadgets, yet cause agony and death if misused. Perhaps its dual nature is what makes Thallium's story so compelling. For the general public it remains largely out of sight and mind, and that's probably for the best. The periodic table is filled with elements, each with their own character. Thallium stands out as one with a dark mystique. Not as famous as arsenic or mercury, but arguably more insidious. It reminds us that sometimes the most dangerous things come in unassuming packages. Now if you want to know more about arsenic, take a look at this video next. Now, if you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode.